Hello, everybody out there in YouTube. We are the middle-aged guys, or at least part of the middle-aged guys, because some of us have real lives. Actually, all of us have real lives, and we're not able to uh, participate on this particular video. But in that case, just to get the introductions out of the way, I'm the Reverend. And I'm Gray Mouse One. Hey, um, yeah, you know, for the middle-aged guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue on what we usually do every week. And this particular news that we're going to jump on isn't exactly new. But it's something that kind of falls within my wheelhouse and our wheelhouse altogether. Um, Sony went out of their way and they announced on the 3rd, earlier this month, um, the PlayStation firmware update 4.50. Uh, along on that update, there was a lot of really, really cool um, features and functions that were coming, not just to the PS4 Pro, the base model and the slim, but also to the PS, excuse me, not just the Sony PlayStation 4, yeah. uh, the slim and the base model, but also the pro model, okay? Generally speaking, there was a lot of features and functionality that was introduced with the brand new firmware update, uh, which was codenamed Sasuke, and it was um, announced out on the third. Uh, the first one that was announced out was external hard drive support, which was really cool. Uh, another thing that was <laughs> announced was stuff like uh, custom wallpapers, a quick menu refresh, uh, simplified notification list, and uh, other stuff for like um, PlayStation VR and activity feeds as far as things that show up on the UI when you're just looking at the cross-media bar format of the Sony PlayStation. The one thing that uh, came along with the firmware update 4.0 that had a lot of people who are really interested, especially the PS4 Pro owners, was a brand new thing that they called beast boost mode boost mode or as they as the fanboys have been calling it beast mode okay and basically what this is is that if you happen to have a playstation 4 game that was released out before the playstation pro was announced in development and if it's a game that you doesn't have a pro mode built into it is that boost mode allows older PlayStation 4 games to go ahead and take advantage of the brand new and upgraded hardware that the PS4 Pro has in box. Um, because the way that um, the PS4 Pro handles, well, previous to the 4.5 update, the way that the PS4 Pro handles older titles is that it runs at a clocked down or downscaled or capped processor speed for both the CPU and the GPU. As such, basically it's kind of running at the same speed as a standard PS4. Um, they do that for, they did that for a various number of reasons, mostly for compatibility and everything else. But it looks like after the number of months that it's been out on the market and everything, they went ahead and they've noticed, hey, look, there's actually no downside for the PS4 Pro to be running at a at a higher um, its natural native clock speed. So let's go ahead and unlock that. Let it run the higher clock speed. The folks who have older titles are going to see a little bit of a boost in performance. Or as um, as they as they said in their particular um, um, let's see here in, in a uh, in a press conference they said. When activated, boost mode lets PS4 Pro run at a higher GPU and CPU clock speed in order to improve gameplay on some games that were released before the launch of the PS4 Pro. Games that have variable frame rate may benefit from a higher frame rate and load times may be shorter in some games too. So basically, if you're somebody who's got a PS4 Pro and you don't have the PS4 VR or you ha don't have, happen to have a game that um, has a pro mode on it and you've got older titles, they've given you a reason to actually pick up the PS4 Pro, you know, which is quite interesting, all right? And that's what we're going to talk about in this first segment here. Um, Gray Mouse, before I monopolize any more time, what are your thoughts on this, sir? I, they should have had this, I don't understand why they would, I mean, I do. I mean, I understand from a, uh, <laughs> from a technical standpoint being that, you know, uh, heat generated by running the uh, GPU, CPU at normal speed. They're going to clock it down, you know, to try to contain the heat and also um, for compatibility and easy um, developing for. I understand that. But um, 
I'm kind of wondering, do you think that Sony is doing this because of what they know that Microsoft is coming out at the end of the uh, year? Because, I mean, because technically, you know, I mean, th that system that Microsoft is, is, is going to be releasing at the end of the year is specifically for 4K gaming. And that's what it is. It's, it's going to be a beast of a system. The powerful, whatever. But there's no games to play on it, so what's the point in having it anyway? <laughs> digress. But um, this might be Sony's little <laughs> trying to say, "Hey, we're still relevant," you know. But because, um, in all honesty, you know, we've been what you know the middle-aged guys have been keeping our ear to the ground with the release of the Pro. We've 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 done several shows about the Pro and the pros and cons. Sorry, I had to do the pun. Um, but it really didn't do much to over the traditional slim and the PS4, uh, the launch console. So now they're pushing out this, uh, this, this software update to where they're actually going to unlock the, the, the potential of the CPU and GPUs. And in all honesty, I think the PlayStation 4 Pro should have already been like that from the beginning. From That should have been... A, that should have been something that they were were headed instead of oh we'll just put this out you know PlayStation 4 Pro and then we'll we'll boost it up later it should have been right out of the box here's PlayStation 4 we're actually going to bring up the clock the GPU CPU to for performance better because uh, they already knew some developers like you said some developers already had the the um, put the the code in for the Pro mode already on their disc. Now the older place, cause PlayStation, we're, we're, we're on year four now, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. So you have still those, the launch titles and you know, a couple other titles, you know, throughout the years that didn't have that, that the PlayStation Pro was not, you, you know, thought of or, or, or out or at the time of the development. So, so that's good. I mean, to me, I think it's really good that, that they're, that, ugh, I'm getting tongue tied here, that they're doing this for, for it. But, in actuality, you know, like you mentioned earlier, Reverend, is it really worth that extra hundred dollars to to have a a slight increase in in performance or while you play in old games, uh, launch title games, when the the frame rate should already be? I mean, I'm trying to play devil's advocate on both sides of the house. I mean, we all as gamers would love to have our games work at sixty frames per second you know, at 1080p and above. We all want to see that. But you got to, you got to, you got to pull it back some, pull that throttle, you know, uh, that that's not, sometimes that's just not reality. Yeah, you can get the, the 1080, but you can't have the 60 frames per second consistent. Yeah, you'll reach it, you'll peak it, and then other times you'll, you'll, you'll dip down to the 50s or whatever, right? But, I mean, I understand where they're coming from, but... Like I said at the beginning of this little spill here, I'm rambling on now, is that I think that when the PlayStation Pro was launched, it should have already had those, it should have already had all the GPUs, CPUs, clocked, normal clocked, instead of just running a software update that will do it for them. I mean, I don't know the ins and the outs on how to do that, how complicated that might be, but- well. Generally speaking, I, I I do have to agree. Uh, the the one thing about this when I, when I sat there and, uh, and I um and I uh, saw that this was actually coming out and that they were doing this, um, I, I do agree that the first thing that came to my mind was, well, shouldn't they have done this from the from the beginning? Um, and there as as somebody who's been on the development side, the only thing I could think of is that they didn't want to sit there and have to mess with. Uh, introducing variable specifications to software that's running. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if the software is done right, uh, you know, and uh, you, every, since everything is made for big spec, um, if you increase the GPU power, increase the CPU power, that can cause unknown issues. And I think that was probably one of the things that they were afraid of. Um, the, the, the thing that I have with it, though, is that if you do that, Let's say if you do that with any sort of uh, PC game, you upgrade your, your CPU or you upgrade your video card, then what happens is that obviously there's going to be a jump in performance. 
but the the difference is, is that PC games are developed to, you know, go ahead and encompass that variable, that spectrum of, of variable hardware. Now, the one thing that you brought up that I, I think we have to sit there and, and kind of bring to the fore that a lot of people have not mentioned that I haven't seen anybody mention is that the timing of the release on this firmware update is kind of suspect. Because if you think about it, it's a month out from the, from the, um, the release of the Switch. And then later on in the year, like you had mentioned, Microsoft is coming out with the Scorpio. Um, <clears throat> I think it keeps, it helps keep Sony. I don't, I don't think Sony has to sit there and needs any help staying relevant. Okay. They have over 60 million uh, consoles sold worldwide in comparison to their nearest competitor, which has less than 40 consoles, uh, excuse me, less than around 30,000 consoles right now. Excuse me, not 30,000, 30 million consoles sold. Like I said before in the previous video, it's not a console war. It's more like console bullying right now. Okay. Yeah. You know, so Sony's, I don't think Sony is really worrying about their relevance as far as their place in the market or their market share. What so, they are concerned of is that I think they are, they do know that if they have these new players out on the market, it's going to take away attention from their system. And they want to be able to say for sure, we are still re relevant and we still do things, you know, the way that people think that we want them to do, you know, well, or the way that people are expecting them to do. You know? yeah, exactly. And, and I was going to mention, I was trying to talk over you, but I was going to mention the same point is I think that Sony's doing this just to maintain status quo is what it is. I mean, not like you just, I, you know, the, the, Sony, the, Sony has 60 million uh, um, consoles sold. Yeah. Microsoft, I'd say around 38 to 40. We don't know. We last numbers we got from them was 2014 late early 2015 numbers yeah it was pretty much two to one so <laughs> right we have yeah and and it's been like that for a while a couple months before though um, microsoft did outsell sony in some important months towards the, the holidays but nonetheless um i i feel that i'm not saying that sony as is is any being afraid but i think they're looking at it from a business standpoint like we know this monster's coming out in this time frame. We need to to encourage our you know users or future users that you know yeah Microsoft has their four K machine, but we could do the same thing at a cheaper rate because you know uh, I think uh, Phil Spencer already said it's going to be between five and six I think, which is what we predicted anyway for the score. Yeah. I mean, come on, it's a huge machine. It's almost a, a, a small PC is what it's amount to. So I think this is like Sony saying, yeah, that's coming out, but guys, we could do 4 gaming, 4K gaming here too, or, or high fidelity uh, um, gaming as well. But it's just, it, and like you mentioned, it is very interesting to me and as, as, as a gamer, and, you know, as middle-aged guys, it's like, hmm, because I always have fun guessing what the other company's going to do. It, it's always, you know, speculate. It's always <laughs> fun to do that. And it's just the timing is just like, wait a minute, you know, because Sony's going to have to deal with Nintendo here in a minute. And then Microsoft at the end, there's no way that, that, that Sony's going to lose their, their market share right now. Not in this generation. That, that's not going to happen. Unless yeah, I... I don't suspect that, that, you know, you out of the, okay. The, the truth of the matter is, this, is that I, as much as I love Nintendo and everything else, you know, the, the owners of the 60 million PS4 consoles that are out there, uh, PS4 pro PS4 slim base PS4 or otherwise, right. That are out in the market. Those guys aren't going to sit there and dump their PS4s for a switch. Okay. No. They're going to get a, they're going to get a switch on top of that. Mm -hmm. But the, the general thing about it is that well, the timing is very suspect because, you know, um, my whole view on the PS4 Pro with this particular functionality with boost mode is that it should have been there from the very beginning. All That's right. My point. However, the thing that a lot of people have to sit there and take in consideration is that if you have a game that runs at a cap 30 frames per second and a 
large majority of the AAA titles out there only run at 30 frames per second. This boost mode, guess what? It's not going to transform your, form your game into running 60 frames because the game just doesn't run at that speed. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All it's going to do is that it's going to allow you to go ahead and um, it, if there are more things on screen that you're not going to see those sort of uh, frame rate dips, it's going to keep give you even frame rates and like the the press release said, maybe faster load times. And that's pretty much it. It's not going to turn whatever game you're currently playing into a brand new experience. It's going to even out the experience so that things are less obvious. Yeah. But yeah, people have to sit there and realize that it's not going to sit there. Um, if you're playing, if you're playing Street Fighter V, guess what? That's already running at a lock sixty frames. You're not going to pump out any more out, out of that. Same thing with any any fighting game or any sports game. You're not going to pump any more um, any more performance out of that. Now, things like The Last of Us. Well, Last of Us has a, has a pro mode. Things like uh, the the Dark Souls games or any game that out there that's really, really busy and really, um, really detailed that doesn't have a pro mode, you know, already patched in. Yeah. Your experiences will probably, will probably be noticeably more consistent, mm -hmm. but it won't be, it won't be transformative. And that's the one thing that a lot of people have to sit there and realize. The other thing with like the external hard drive and the other, other features, they're nice little features. They're nice little details that we keep hold of. Again, a lot of that stuff, a lot of people were thinking, or uh, were asking out loud, well, why wasn't this there in the first place? You know? One thing that's interesting, too, is that, just, just to wrap this up real quick, one thing that I find interesting, too, is that there's enough change, there's significant enough change to pull the, uh, I'm talking about, like, the base Xbox One and the base PlayStation 4, to pull the performance up past the Xbox One's original performance, right? Because the PlayStation 4, let's be honest, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One pretty much are identical side by side. Pretty negligible, well, yeah. So negligible, extremely negligible, right? So, but the pro mode or beast mode will pull them up, pull them up a little bit more. So, so people were like, okay, so I pay $100 for this new, you know, for a better performance than the Xbox One, and it's still cheaper then the, the Scorpio up here at $500. So, and this is perfect. This is what I like about the, the, um, the industry. Gives you, uh, you, you know, we've said this many, many times on this channel, options are great. So my, not all of us have $600 to spend on a, on a freaking miniature PC. You know, some people don't have that type of money. So there's different tiers in, in what your entertainment, what you, you'll be able to get out of your entertainment, which is good. So, I mean, and, and the bottom line, they should have had that when, it, when uh, uh, PlayStation Pro um, was released at the beginning. And, but, I mean, it is what it is. So, those are my final thoughts on this particular topic. Yeah, I mean, you know, my whole thing is that it, I, I think it should have been there from the beginning. I know why they didn't do it, you know, for compatibility reasons. And uh, in, in a surprising move, a first party publisher was actually considering, you know, the type of load that it would. Oh yeah. They didn't want to go out of their way to completely fuck developers. Okay. That, you know, in a, in a surprising move, I, I, I thank them for that, but it's one of those things where the architecture is very much similar to PC architecture mm -hmm. and PC architecture has been framed to go ahead and deal with the variable uh, specs yep. and specifications, you know, a wide spectrum of hardware like that. So at least, you know, they know that the increases and the changes aren't like huge, you know, world breaking things. And this is something that should have been there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now with them putting it out now, it still keeps them in the, up in the forefront in everybody's attention and everything else. Everybody has to go ahead and pay attention to what they're doing. And yeah, if you were asking me now in comparison to six months ago, is going out of the out of your way to pay the extra one hundred dollars for a PS4 Pro is it worth it? I would say yeah, it's worth it now. If you don't already have a PS4, all right. If you have a PS4, guess what? Unless you need an extra console around, I don't think it's worth it. Still, okay. Um, but if you're a brand new owner or somebody who's looking for for a PS4 and you're wondering whether or not the extra hundred bucks is worth it, 
Now in this instance, yes it is. Okay. And I'll be completely honest with that.